This is Professor Anne Orion Spihar from the University of Alaska Southeast. And this is part two of Economic Growth 2, the solo growth model with technological progress. In part two, we will discuss growth empirics, including a discussion on balanced growth and issues of convergence across nations. We will also discuss growth from factor accumulation versus increases in efficiency. After completing this lecture, students will be able to incorporate and analyze the impact of technological progress into the solo growth model, analyze the empirical data supporting the solo growth model theory, and explain the predictions of the solo growth model and whether the data supports convergence or conditional convergence towards the steady state. According to the SOLO model, technological progress causes the values of many variables to rise together in the steady state. The steady state exhibits balanced growth, meaning many variables grow at the same rate. This property, called balanced growth, does a good job of describing the long-run data for the U.S. economy. Consider first output per worker, Y over L, and the capital stock per worker, K over L, According to the SOLO model, in the steady state, both of these variables grow at G, the rate of technological progress. The U.S. data for the past half century show that output per worker and capital per worker have in fact grown at approximately the same rate, about 2% per year. To put it another way, capital output ratio has remained approximately constant over time. Technological progress also affects factor prices. In the steady state, the real rate grows at the rate of technological progress. However, the real rental rate, or the real rental price, is constant over time. Again, these predictions hold true for the U.S., and over the past 50 years, the real wage in the U.S. has increased about 2% per year. It has increased at about the same rate as real GDP per worker. Yet the real rental price of capital, as measured in real capital income divided by the capital stock, has remained about the same. The SOLA model predicts that, other things being equal, ceteris paribus, poor countries with lower output per worker and capital per worker should grow faster than rich ones. And then the income gap between rich and poor countries should shrink over time, causing living standards to converge. In the real world, poor countries do not grow faster than rich ones. Does this mean the SOLO model fails? The SOLO model with labor augmented technology predicts that poor countries will eventually catch up to, or converge with, rich countries' GDP per capita if they have the same steady state. And remember, the steady state is determined by the savings rate, population growth rate, depreciation rates, and the growth rate of the efficiency of labor. So even though they may have different capital stocks to begin with, if they have identical steady states, the poorer country will grow faster than the more wealthy country. And the two will eventually arrive at the same steady state of capital and GDP per worker. Similarly, the SOLA model predicts that if they have different steady states, perhaps due to different savings rates or population growth rates, then we would not expect them to share the same steady state capital per worker or output per capita. Each country will have their own steady state conditioned on the parameters of savings, population growth, efficiency of labor, and depreciation rates. The prediction that countries are said to converge if we control for the population, savings, and human capital is called conditional convergence. They converge conditionally because convergence to a steady state is conditioned on the parameters that move each to some steady state, not necessarily the same steady state. Whether absolute convergence between countries or regions occur depends on whether they have similar or identical characteristics or parameters that lead them to the same steady states. They may start out with various different levels of capital, 
but if the parameters are identical, then we expect absolute convergence and mean that poor countries' income levels, GDP per capita, will eventually match rich countries' GDP per capita and that the poor countries will eventually converge to the same steady state of capital per worker and GDP per capita. The data does not seem to support absolute convergence, but does support conditional convergence. If we control for the determinants of the steady state, economies seem to exhibit conditional convergence. They converge to their own steady states, which are determined by their savings rate, population growth rates, and human capital. So the SOLO model predicts that ceteris paribus, poor countries with lower output per worker and capital per worker should grow faster than rich ones. But this isn't true because other things aren't equal. In samples of countries with similar savings and population growth rates, income gaps shrink about 2% per year. In larger samples, after controlling for differences in savings, population growth, and human capital, incomes converge by about 2% per year. So what the SOLO model really predicts is conditional convergence. That is, countries converge to their own steady states, which are determined by their savings, their population growth, and the education. And this prediction comes true in the real world. Now let's talk about factor accumulations versus production efficiency on the impact of income per capita. Differences in income per capita among countries can be due to either one, capital, whether physical or human, per worker, or the efficiency of the production method, the production function. Studies have indicated both factors are indeed important. In fact, the two factors are highly correlated. Countries with higher physical or human capital per worker also tend to have higher production efficiency. Possible explanations for the correlation between capital per worker and production efficiency are that production efficiency encourages capital accumulation, and capital accumulation has externalities that indeed raise efficiency. Finally, there are third and unknown variable causes for capital accumulation and efficiency to be higher in some countries than others. And this concludes Part 2 of Economic Growth 2, the solo growth model with technological progress. This is Professor Anne Orion Spihar from the University of Alaska Southeast.